Do you enjoy being a human being? Because human beings have a lot of I frailty. Do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're not perfect. Celebrities, they're just like us. Just ask Jennifer Lawrence in like every interview she's ever done. Where's the pizza? <laughs> but really, they are human beings. And when they're not out filming and promoting television shows or movies or playing whichever sport has made them famous or even, you know, doing whatever the Kardashians do to make them famous. Super hot lady who my wife keeps telling me why you're famous, but I keep forgetting. They do have hobbies just like quote, normal people do. We are <laughs> super normal. We watch Family Feud every night before we fall asleep. So we scoured the internet to find the top 10 most interesting hobbies for different celebrities. Johnny Depp and Barbie. Johnny Depp's wild spending habits have been in the news for the past few years, but popped up again recently as his lawsuit against his former management company became more and more public. Depp, who is the highest paid actor in the world for most of the early to mid aughts, has come out to say that the estimates for things like his monthly wine spending budget were offensive, as the estimates were way too low. It was reported that he spent $30,000 a month on wine, something that he said he spent far more on. Fun coupons! See that? Beyond that, he also famously spent millions to shoot his former friend, legendary Gonzo reporter Hunter S. Thompson's ashes into the air out of a custom-made cannon. So there's not a ton that will surprise you about Depp's spending and hobbies, at least until now. It's been reported that Depp loves him some Barbie dolls. That's right, Jack Sparrow has an expensive Barbie doll collection. Captain Jack Sparrow, if you please. Something that he hasn't attempted to hide. When asked about his Barbie collection, Depp said playing with the dolls was something he was good at. You enjoy playing with Barbie dolls. Well, He's collected doll versions of characters he's played in film and also has Barbies and dolls for High School Musical, Beyonce, and more. He uses the dolls to get into character while filming movies and also to bond with his kids. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. Liking this video so far? Hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more great videos. Azalea Banks and Witchcraft. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? If you've ever ended up on the weird part of YouTube, you'll know that there are a lot of people out there that believe that basically everyone in Hollywood is part of some sort of coven of witches that loves a form of the devil called Baphomet, which is all part of the stonemasons. So while calling Azalea Banks a celebrity in 2018 might be a bit of a stretch by now, her interest in witchcraft is too interesting not to be covered. She infamously posted and then deleted a post on Instagram back a few years ago that stated that she practices witchcraft in a room or closet that she specifically uses for animal sacrifices, namely chickens. In the post, she shared a video of herself cleaning up the blood of chickens which had dried on the walls, as well as feathers and the bodies of two dead chickens. She referred to what she was doing as brujera, a Spanish word for witchcraft, and that she had been doing it for three years. The post stated real witches do real things while she was operating a sandblaster to get the blood off the wall. Even if you're not a fan of PETA, you have to feel for those chickies and the backlash from animal lovers was strong, as was the backlash from those who believe that Hollywood is just evil. It was just one of a ton of hits to the image of Azalea, which can partially explain why she hasn't been relevant all that much since. Is one of those supposed to be a celebrity? Mike Tyson and Pigeons. Yeah, you look familiar. Joey, look at this guy's mug. Yeah. If there's one person you wouldn't want to anger in this world, you'd have to think it was former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. Maybe the most powerful boxer of all time, Tyson had a reputation during his prime of being a person who's extremely volatile, angry, and genuinely scary. That image has softened as of late, thanks to roles in films like The Hangover and also his one-man show that showed that he's actually a very intelligent and genuinely funny person. Before people came to love Tyson, it was reported that he was a big fan of pigeons, which means that he's probably got a bone to pick with the aforementioned Azalea Banks, and that he has spent a ton of money on rare pigeon breeds that it keeps in a coop. How you like me now? How do you like me now? He's attended multiple pigeon pageants and has even spent time training his birds to be the best racers they can be. He also wants to bring the hobby to the newer and younger generations and has said, take this opportunity to young age to enhance your responsibility and enjoy it. Well said, Mike. Well said. Nice. <laughs> Paris Hilton and frog hunting. Can you want a kiss? Kissing would be nice, yeah? Another former celebrity, Paris Hilton, has done something most celebs would never think of, as she's basically consciously stopped trying to be famous. It was always reported that Paris wasn't as stupid as she let on while out in public or on the reality shows, and the amount of money that she made off her brand and companies is proof of that. I am a very hardworking businesswoman, 
and an entrepreneur. So it's not that surprising that she's decided to step away from the public eye as she's matured, as she no longer needs that image to promote her numerous companies. Despite that, though, she still does give interviews from time to time. And one of the things that surprised her fans and people in general, especially those that watched her reality show with Nicole Richie, was that she loved catching frogs outside of her ranches. That show, The Simple Life, showed Hilton as someone who's a prima donna and thus afraid of getting dirty or doing anything that seems gross. Ah! Good morning, ah! there we go. So it's surprising that she loves catching frogs, something that she got heat for from the animal rights community. Because, you know, of course she did. She defended her frog hunting practices as humane, as she always releases the frogs back into the wild. This is one of the few hobbies on this list that humanizes the celebrity, and shows that perhaps a reputation that a famous person has doesn't fully describe who they are and what they're about. Have you ever taken care of a three-year-old before? Um... Like, yeah. Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak and Segway Polo. It's not binary. You can be decent and gifted at the same time. And what seems like the most stereotypical thing a person with too much money can do, the beloved Steve Woz Wozniak has said and been pictured playing a new sport called Segway Polo. Polo typically is played on horses, and while that's still the case, there is a new offshoot for the top 1% that involves the players riding Segways instead. There's actually a league for this game, which perhaps unsurprisingly plays in Silicon Valley, and Woz plays this sport for a team called the Silicon Valley Aftershocks all around the world. A few summers ago, he played in the Segway Polo World Championships in Cologne, Germany. And because of his participation and support for the league, the trophy for that championship was named after him, the Waz Cup. Beyond the sport, Waz just loves riding a Segway everywhere he can, and he said, when I want to go into town or I want to buy something, I'll take the Segway, and I'm into town in 10 minutes. And I feel happy. I got to skip the whole car thing. The Segway has brought a lot to my life. If that's not an amazing sales pitch, I don't know what is. Sell me this pen. Angelina Jolie and Daggers. Check it out, hooking the daggers. Back before she met and married Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie was known as perhaps the wildest child in Hollywood. From wearing a vial of her then-husband Billy Bob Thornton's blood to making out with her brother on the red carpet, Jolie was considered such a liability that she was drug-tested every day on the set of the blockbuster film Tomb Raider. Getting married and having an adopting kid seemed to calm her down, and especially when she joined the UN, she became the face of charity and the good that can come from celebrity. Apparently, she still maintains some of her wild habits, though, as she stated in a 2008 interview with W Magazine that she collects daggers. The story behind her dagger collection is actually pretty heartwarming, as it was something that her mom got her into before she passed away. She only collects dull blades so she can share the hobby with her son Maddox, and she also has used the daggers to talk to her son about violence. Beyond that, she also talked to her son about samurais and about the idea of defending someone as good. Nobody messes with the samurai. We talk about everything, she said. That shows you how sharing a hobby can help open up discussions about life with your kids. And while it may seem like an odd hobby, it's something that has clearly brought so much joy to her life and the life of her children. So who can really get mad at her for it? You know what? Don't answer that. You sure you want to do this? Of course I'm not. Let's go. Taylor Swift and Snow Globes. What do you think when you Google yourself? I think... You should never Google yourself again. Taylor Swift very well may be the most famous person on the planet. And while she's generally beloved, there are people that think she's basically a sociopath and has a vice-like grip on her public image. So take the following with a grain of salt, as it very well may be something she's calculated to make her look like a normal and sentimental person, rather than like some sort of celebrity robot, something you'll also hear on the weird part of YouTube. Either way you slice it, though, it's pretty cute that Taylor is known to love DIY and arts and crafts. She loves to share her creations with her fans, and a big part of that comes around the holidays when she's shared her snow globe collection with her fans. Most Christmases, Swift has shared the snow globes that she's built for friends and family online, which has to be a pretty disappointing present from someone who has enough money to actually make it snow. Either way, the gifts she gives for what has been branded Swift Mists show that she's a giving person, or perhaps that she wants you to believe that she is. Either way, we're sure those globes are worth a pretty penny considering, so perhaps it's not as disappointing a gift as some might think. <laughs> Tom Hanks and typewriters. Now if they take 70 seconds to type me out something on a piece of paper and send it to me, well, I'll keep that forever. While Taylor Swift might be the most famous person on the planet, it's arguable that there's no person that's more beloved in the world than actor Tom Hanks. The best actor of his generation and an all-around nice guy, Hanks could easily run for any office he wants and win in a landslide. There are actually groups that keep track of the likability, trust factor, and other factors when it comes to celebrities. And it's actually a quantifiable fact that Hanks is super beloved and trusted by people, which makes it surprising that he hasn't ever really thrown his brain 
brand behind another brand for sponsorship purposes, as he could make another fortune pitching credit cards or cell phone services. The one thing that he would actually sponsor are vintage typewriters, something he loves and has collected for years. However, he once wrote in a 2013 op-ed, there's no reason to own hundreds of old typewriters other than the sing of misguided avarice, of which I am guilty. Thus ending any chance that he'd become the face of the vintage typewriting industry. But Hanks even did appear in a recent documentary about typewriters called California Typewriter. So why does he like them so much? Mainly because of the sounds that they make. Maybe it's an ASMR thing for him. Hanks did actually create an app called Hanks Writer that brings the font of old school manual typewriters to smartphones. So maybe he's making some money off of this dead industry after all. No one is ever going to make the great typewriter ever, ever, ever again. Shailene Woodley makes her own toothpaste, lotions, and more. And if you don't glow, hey now, you're an all-star, get your game on. Shailene Woodley, star of the Divergent films, has always been a unique person. The definition of a woke celebrity, she's been outspoken about a lot of different issues since she became famous a few years ago. That far-left message is something she actually lives, which is really rare in a world where celebrities who talk about environmental issues, for example, leave a gigantic carbon footprint thanks to their private planes and gigantic air-conditioned homes and or use of plastic and eating of meat or animal products. Woodley isn't one of those celebrities, which she made clear during an interview with Flaunt Magazine in 2013. In that interview, she stated that she makes her own toothpaste, lotions, face oils, medicines, and cheese. Beyond that, she even forages for food, which apparently is part of a lifestyle. Maybe the paleo diet, which is thought to be as close to what humans used to eat back during the hunter-gatherer days as possible. This wasn't just a phase either, as she more recently brought Jimmy Fallon some natural immune system boosters when she was on The Tonight Show. Granted, she probably took a plane to get there, but nobody's perfect. I'm a man. Well, nobody's perfect. Bob Barker and Chuck Norris. I was explaining that I studied karate with Chuck Norris. There's no more beloved game show host than Bob Barker, who hosted The Price is Right for decades while also hosting other shows back in his prime in the 60s. Retiring a few years ago so Drew Carey could take over, Barker is still alive and kicking at the ripe old age of 92. It could be said that his longevity is based on his workout routine, one that he has talked about in his autobiography titled Priceless Memories. Half his lifetime ago, at the age of 45, Barker actually took up karate as a way to stay in shape and burn off anxious energy. Energy, and he actually trained under none other than Chuck Norris. That sounds like the recipe for a perfect internet story or at least meme, but it's true. As Barker stated, we started out here on my lawn, and then I started parking my car on the driveway and made the garage into a karate studio. For those of you that have seen the Adam Sandler film Happy Gilmore, it actually finally makes a whole lot of sense as to why Barker was the only one who could best Gilmore in a fight. While he didn't bust out any karate moves in that brawl, he was able to really hurt Gilmore during one of the most famous film fights in Hollywood history, not to mention one of the best one-liners of all time. The price is wrong, bitch. This is the most humiliating moment of my life. Bust a move on your keyboard and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And don't go anywhere. Stick around to check out more great videos.